Hey everyone, well, <laughs> got hair on my hand. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today I'm going to be bringing you three and a half Dollar Tree DIYs as well as one little furniture redo, all of which are in that farmhouse style that we know and love. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Also, don't forget to comment, give it a thumbs up, and let me know what you think. And now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're going to be using one of these metal baskets, one of these chalkboard tags, a bistro chalk marker that I get from Walmart, and this is the project that I'm calling the half because there's really nothing to it and this was the last thing I did, but I'm showing it to you first because it is the easiest one. So all I did was took the tag and with my bistro marker, I'm just going to write eggs and then give it a couple of little dots and then tie that to the front of the basket. I'm serious, this took me like two minutes. So it turns out to be one of the cutest ones though. So since the basket's already white, there's really nothing to do and the little chalkboard sign is so cute and it even comes with the little jute twine so that you can just tie a little sweet bow on there. And this is how it turned out and I took some actual eggs and put them in there. I was gonna make some, but I couldn't find my Easter stuff to make decorative eggs, so these are actually real ones. And then I also placed some small little plates in the back just to make it extra cute. And I'm gonna show the whole vignette at the end when I'm all done. So here's the super quick little furniture redo and I took this piece from my brother and sister-in-law's living room and as you may know if you watch my channel I am doing a redo of their entire living room on a budget. So this is a side table that they've had for a while and it has seen better days but it's perfect to start with because it's already black and when you go to distress something whatever the color is underneath that's what's going to show. So it made this project super easy and super quick. So all I did was start by cleaning it up and wiping it down and then I'm going to take my white chalk paint and my Annie Sloan paintbrush that my friend gave me and I'm going to just start painting away. I don't want a completely perfect coverage on this because I am going to distress it like I said just to give it that farmhouse rustic look and then I'm going to take my sandpaper and I just wipe down with the sandpaper on the areas that would be worn and scuffed up. And I did that while the paint had just dried. It was dry to the touch, but it wasn't completely dry. So that made it really easy to give it that rustic farmhouse look. out and I absolutely love this it is so pretty you guys and it literally took me probably 20 to 30 minutes to do this it is a small piece but any kind of furniture that you want to give new life to a coat of chalk paint and some sandpaper and then ultimately some polyurethane on top and it's a brand new piece but I love it I think they're gonna love it and I hope you like it too
project we'll be using a charger from Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in ink, some scrap lamb's ear from Walmart, and also a little cotton bud that I made. And then we'll be using the Silhouette Cameo 3 and my white vinyl transfer tape and the weeding tools. And then my hot glue gun, scissors, wire cutters, and a chenille stem, and my ruler. And then also some fabric, and I just used a little piece of this gingham, and you'll see that in a minute. So the first thing I did was just cleaned off my charger really well, and then I added my chalk paint in ink, which is really black, and I just pour it on there, and I love doing that for some reason. It reminds me of finger painting or something, but I just slap it on there and then just slap it all around. And you think it's really covered with just one coat, but it's not. When it dries, you can see through it still. So you have to give it a couple or three coats of the black to get it fully covered. And then I'm gonna go to my Silhouette Cameo 3 and cut out my words. And on this, I used the font The Skinny and then Bargain Demo, I think that's what it is. It'll be in the description box below though. And it'll also be available in my Etsy shop, which is White Sparrow Living. And so on the top part, I'm gonna put Give Us This Day. And then on the inside, I'm gonna put Our Daily Bread. And so I was thinking about this project when I was doing it. And this is the most well-known prayer that was given by the Lord. And pretty much everybody knows this prayer. And one thing that was really put on my heart to share with you guys, there's one small word that has more meaning than we really probably recognize. And so the part that's right after, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so the part that says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. And something that I learned a while back is that that as really should say as much as. So forgive us our trespasses as much as we forgive those who trespass against us. So I feel like there's somebody who could really use this encouragement and this little bit of word to understand that forgiveness is something that we can do for ourselves. If there's somebody that you're not forgiving, maybe you should think about letting that go because that really does help you, but also because the words say, as we forgive those. So we're asking the Lord to forgive us our trespasses or our sins as much as we forgive those who trespass against us. So I don't know if that can help somebody or encourage somebody, but it was just on my heart and I thought I would share it with you. So as you can see, I took my words after I cut them out and then just put them across the top and then into the middle. And I originally thought I had the measurements just right to go with the circle and do it all in one shot, but I didn't have it quite right. So I had to cut them and do it individually, but that's okay because we're flexible and so we just make do and make it work. Now I'm going to take some of that gingham fabric and I just cut a strip about an inch wide and I'm going to use that to make a little bow with two loops on each side. I ended up wanting it to be frayed at the ends all across the edges but I didn't think about it until after I had made it into my little bow so if you do this project just fray it before you put it together and it makes it a lot easier to do so then I just took my chenille stem and wrapped it around and then gave my ends some dovetails and then I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to put some lamb's ear down at the very bottom of my charger and I just use scraps and this is a good way to not let any of your leaves or greenery go to waste and so I'm just gonna decide which way I want them to go and 
I like to have the larger ones behind the smaller ones. And then I'm gonna take some baby's breath from Dollar Tree and just split those apart and then cut them off at the ends and glue that on top of my lamb's ear. And then I'm gonna take my little bow and I'm gonna put that down kind of to the side and then I'm gonna put my cotton bowl right next to that. And this I had made in a prior DIY using cotton balls and some old Dollar Tree greenery that I had painted brown. I can't remember which video that was in, so if I can find it, I will link that as well in the description box. how this turned out and it's going to go so cute with all of our goodies that we're going to be making today and it's perfect for a kitchen all of these items are going to be cute for a kitchen but you could place this anywhere and it has such a special message so jumping right into our next project i'm going to be using some more of that gingham fabric and the black i'm not using the white because i changed my mind a mop head from dollar tree and then a pair of white socks also from Dollar Tree and some rice from Dollar Tree and then some rubber bands and some kids utensils, little play utensils, they're small and then some polyfill or it doesn't even have to be that, it could be any kind of stuffing and then black thread and a needle and then some Waverly white chalk paint and some antique wax and then a vase or something to help us fill our socks with rice and then a hot glue gun and scissors and so the first thing i did was took my socks and there's two pairs that come in a pack but i'm just using one pair and i'm going to cut those right across where the hill is right in the middle of the hill and so i should have put one inside of the other at this point i just didn't realize how thin they really were and then i just took a measuring cup and then filled up my sock with rice and i used two cups to get it nice and full but not too overly big so here's where i'm going to put that second sock on but i know you guys do as i say and not as i do so you'll have already had it on there so now i'm going to take a rubber band and close that up at the top and then i'm going to grab a big chunk out of the middle where a nose should be and I'm going to take another rubber band and wrap that around that so that it stays in place and then I'm going to take some ink and this is just some Stampin Up scrapbooking ink with a paintbrush and I painted on to make his nose nice and rosy and cute but you could use some blush or makeup or whatever you have on hand so now I'm going to take some of that gingham fabric and I'm going to wrap it around the base of my gnome which is what this is and see how how much fabric I actually need and then I'm going to take my iron and get all of the wrinkles out and make that all nice and flat and then I'm going to take my scissors and in the middle of my gingham I'm going to cut out a little semicircle so that his nose can kind of slip right in there and then I'm going to take my hot glue and just start gluing that down first under his nose and then all the way around so that it stays in place 
And then when it comes together at the back, I'm gonna fold it over so that I have a nice clean seam that I'll again glue down. And then at the bottom, I'm just gonna cut off the excess fabric and then fold it over and gather it and glue it down, kind of like when you're wrapping a present. For his little beard I'm just gonna cut off a few of the strands from the mop head and then I'll cut those in half and then glue each one just kind of tucked under his little nose and then push that down with either a popsicle stick or in this case I have my finger protectors but just use whatever you have on hand and it shouldn't show if his nose kind of folds over it. And then once you get that all nice and full, then we're gonna take some of the black fabric and fold that over and make the rim of his chef's hat. So I just folded it over and ironed it down and then folded it over again and then cut it off about halfway in the back and then hot glued that to close it up. And then I'm gonna take another piece that's about 12 by 12 and make that into a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but just a circular shape, and then place some stuffing in the middle of that. And for this, you don't have to use polyfill. You could use a paper towel or even a trash bag or something just to get it so that it's nice and full. And then I'm gonna gather that up and then use a rubber band to close it up. And then I'll use my hot glue gun to attach the band around his head and over his nose so that his nose is just peeking out. cut off the top part of my sock and then I decided to wrap it with some string just to give it a little more security in case the rubber bands let go and then I'm gonna cut off the top portion of the chef's hat as well and this material is pretty thick so it was no joke and kind of hard to get off but I just cut the excess fabric off and then I'm going to take my needle and thread and do a hidden stitch well as much as I can hide it I'm not a great seamstress but I just attached the bottom portion of the poof to the top portion of the rim. And there's Cadence saying hi.
picked a utensil and I decided to use the spatula and I'm just going to use my chalk paint in white and paint the entire thing. I did paint the back as well just in case anything was poking through you wouldn't see any red. And then at the handle I'm going to give that a wood look with my Waverly Wax in Antique and I just did some strokes along the edges where it's raised so that it looked like a wooden handle. And then I'm going to use my hot glue and attach that to my little chef. this little guy all ready to go and maybe do some barbecuing I got this idea from my daughter when she was in Solvang and they had something like this at one of their shops but I thought it was so stinking cute and I hope you guys like it so now for our final project I think this is my favorite we're gonna be using a big empty pickle jar and then one of these plastic Dollar Tree bowls they come in a pack of three and then one of these plastic dessert bowls that come in a pack of 12 and then I was going to use this cookie sheet that's kind of like a foil thing but I changed that up in the end and then some floral foam and then some greenery from the Dollar Tree and then my Waverly White chalk paint and ink chalk paint and then we'll be using the Silhouette Cameo 3 and my black vinyl, the transfer tape from Dollar Tree, and then my weeding tools. And then my hot glue gun, some E6000, and my scissors. And so the first thing I'm going to do is put this all together. I thought that this was going to fit exactly. I thought it was touching at the rim. So I used my hot glue and glued where I thought it was touching, but it turns out there was a tiny, tiny gap, so it didn't even touch touch it and it wasn't adhered so I ended up having to hot glue it at the top only and you want to add your E6000 as well and I didn't show that here so after I get this portion on I'm going to add the little dessert cup to the top of this right side up and then that's going to serve as the mouth of our little jug so because my handles didn't work out with my cookie sheet I decided to use a dog leash instead and so I just tucked it under the lip where that little gap was between the bowl and the jar and then I put hot glue on both sides and tucked it in there and used a popsicle stick to get it all nice and adhered and then I did the same thing on the other side and measured how big I wanted my handles to be and then glued that into place as well and then I took some more glue and to make the handles stand upright, I put some on the ledge of the bowl so that I could adhere the handles to that so that they would be nice and perky. And so I did the same thing on the other side and then I'm gonna paint the entire thing with my chalk paint in white.
So to make sure that my handles were nice and hard, I put a lot of paint on those on both the inside and the outside so that when it dries, it's going to stay in that position. So I made sure to keep them nice and open and used my fingers to make them do that. So then I'm going to measure to see how large I need to make my decal and I used a piece of scrap vinyl from Frisco Craft and I'll have that in my description box below as well as in my Amazon store. So if you guys need some good vinyl, this is definitely the kind to use. So now I'm going to take my chalk paint in ink and I'm going to take a makeup sponge and just go around the edges and make this an enamel wear effect. I know I do enamel wear a lot, but this was screaming for it too. It's a milk jug and of course it's got to be enamel wear. So I just go along the rims and I wait to do my little chips on the places where I kind of mess up or if I go out of the lines or off the rails I'll just use it there and that makes it look more authentic with those little chips in there and so I do that on every surface that has a line including the two handles so I really try to multitask so that I can get these projects done and so when my paint is drying on something that's when I'll go and start my decal and then I'll go back to it for a second coat and so on and so forth just to save time and get things done faster. <music> So just a little tip, anytime I cut out a square from a piece of vinyl, I'll cut those excess pieces into squares and then put them into a scrap pile so that if I need something that size, I have it readily available and I don't have to cut off more and I'm wasting less. So anyway, I'm going to pull off the top part of my vinyl and then weed out the inside of the words. And I made this say Curtis Dairy, Farm Fresh, Milk cream and butter so i'll have this in my etsy shop again that's white sparrow living but if you order this i'll put your name so it can be personalized and i think it's so stinking cute but anyway i'm gonna put this on the front of my milk jug and then i'm gonna fill the top with a piece of styrofoam that i paint white so that it just kind of matches the jug and maybe even looks like you're sticking it into milk and then I'm going to cut off my greenery and stick those into the middle and then it'll be done.
I use the Dollar Tree Greenery and it's not that great of a deal because each of these little bundles were a dollar and so there was four bundles all together and it wasn't beautiful so I kind of tried to hide it with the little cotton bowls but I think this turned out so super cute. I'm absolutely in love with this and here's the entire vignette all put together and I absolutely love this. I love the colors and you know I love the black and white and look how cute it is with the buffalo check. So I think this turned out super cute. I hope you guys love it. My daughter Christine and I will be doing the living room makeover for my brother and sister-in-law next week. So we should have that video ready for you guys by Friday. And so I hope everyone is doing really well. I appreciate all of your comments. Remember, I read each and every one of them. And so I get a little behind on replying back and sometimes I can't reply to every one of them, but do know that I read them and we'll have another prayer post coming up pretty soon. So be on the lookout for that. I'm not doing an on-camera farewell because I can't figure out how to line up my words with the video so it looks like an old kung fu movie and so until I get that figured out I'm just gonna not do them but that's okay you can also find us on Facebook and what's the other one Instagram so check us out there and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment. Let me know what you think and share it. And if you're not already subscribed, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below so that we can grow this channel. And also hit that little bell right next to it so that it'll tell you every time I upload a brand new video. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.